Before we begin, I have no idea how to play MK9, so I'm going to need some training. Alright, this <laughs> is Sonic, haha, you suck, XD. I'm professional FGC coach, gamer, and Shiva stomp expert. <laughs> true underdog. And today, I'm turning you from noob cybot into pro cybot. But I don't even play noob cybot. Stop talking and show me those quarter circles. Huh. Dragon punch, half circle forward, charge back forward, double quarter circle forward, half circle back, half circle forward, 360, and now do them all again in reverse. Uh... And also those weird back, back, and forward, forward inputs because you're playing MK9 and they have that for some reason. Oh, that's how you do force ball. Clap, clap, waitress. I'm getting hungry. Now show me that bread and butter. Good. Now spice things up a little bit. Not enough damage. Show me some more damage. It's time to get serious. Activating cold-blooded mode. <laughs> Scary monster. in the x-ray <laughs> maximum damage yeah! now finish him Yes! 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 You did it! Oh, I'm so proud of you, my son! You did it! You won the day! You're a hero! You saved the planet! Well, maybe not, but you pulled off a badass combo. You gotta start somewhere. Oh, wait a minute. I don't think Reptile's playable in story mode. Also, why are you using a GameCube controller? Mortal Kombat, also known as Mortal Kombat 9 is a reboot of the MK franchise, where they took the first three games, and retold them for a modern audience. This is also the very first game NetherRealm Studios created. After Midway shut down back in 2010, some people really like the story, and think it's a good way to get into the Mortal Kombat franchise, while others think it's horrible, and tarnishes the reputation of the series. But those don't matter. The only thing that matters is MY OPINION! So let's get right into Mortal Kombat. We start the story with everyone being dead. That's all, folks. Sadly, I believe this is 720p and this is the best- NO! REPTILE! Ah! Okay, that's the only death that I feel sad for. So, I feel like 90% of people who played this for the first time have no idea what's going what on here. What is going on here? Like, how did we get here? So this all takes place right after the end of the last game. No not that one. This one. Mortal Kombat Armageddon takes place at the end of the original Mortal Kombat timeline. A lot happens in that game. But the main point to talk about is the ending. All the characters in the series form two teams. Team Might. And Team Dark. They then have a final battle at the Pyramid of Argus. To see who can get to the top and defeat Blaze. And whoever defeats Blaze, will gain ultimate power. In the original game, Taven was supposed to be the one who defeats Blaze. However, in MK9, Shao Kahn is the victor. Because he kept spamming his bullshit shoulder bash. Actually, no. Shao Kahn winning really is quite bullshit. He was doing pretty good against the fighters in the intro of Armageddon. But then he gets dragged away by Onaga. So you mean to tell me, he defeated Onaga, one of the most powerful beings in the Mortal Kombat universe, went back to the pyramid, killed all the fighters, then killed Blaze, who is also one of the most powerful beings in the Mortal Kombat universe, and this is the same motherfucker who gets blinded by Katana. Shao Kahn has won, and he tortures the last remaining hope this world has, Raiden, and just as Shao Kahn is about to kill Raiden, Raiden does a final Hail Mary move, and sends three words to his past self. He must win. And these three words will pass down mayhem and havoc throughout the MK fandom for years. We now officially begin our journey. Raiden in the past receives a message, but doesn't quite understand what it's about. And his amulet cracks. Regardless, Regardless. the opening ceremony begins, showcasing the fighters who will be participating in the tournament. 
plus some randos, like Scarlet, Random Stuntman, and Classic Smoke. We land our attention onto the main character of this chapter, Johnny Cage, the martial arts movie star, who probably thought this tournament was his next gig. What? Massive Strike? Citizen Cage? Ninja Mime? Cage None of those ring a bell? Kano. Kano? Wasn't in that one. I think there was a movie called Kano, now I think about it. He's called up first, to fight. Reptile! Yay. Wait. I have to beat him up. No! Johnny wins. <clears throat> I'm taking you down, I'm taking you down, I'm taking you out, I'm taking you out, and I'm taking you out. For dinner. Why Johnny? You shouldn't have. Uh, I, I, I don't want to kink shame or nothing, but I'm not a scaly, bro. Seriously, I'm not a scaly. Honest, I swear to God, I'm not a scaly. Uh, I know someone who is. I can introduce you to him. I'm sure you're a nice guy, but I, I swear it wasn't you I was talking to. Not that there's anything wrong with you. You're, you're a very nice, marginally handsome lizard man, but I swear it wasn't you. It was the nice lady behind you, and she's gone. When did she leave? <sighs> then he faces Baraka and defeats him. By the way, Johnny still doesn't know that this isn't a movie, so you better not get stabbed by Baraka in the gameplay, or else it's not canon. I also love how he is impressed with Reptile and Baraka. Nice stunt. Who's your agent? Nice makeup. But is it really necessary? Whoa! Man, I love those blades! So much so, that he wants Baraka to be in his next movie. My producer has got to meet you. We're doing Tommy Scissor Fists. I hope they reference this in Cage Match. Now before we move on, I'd like to talk about a new character in this story. Me. When I was a wee little gg mon. Back in 2011, I was randomly scrolling around YouTube, and I saw Ryan Justine playing Mortal Kombat 9. She picked Melina. She was trying her out in the game, and all seemed normal. But then after she won, Melina jumped to the screen and took off her mask. I was terrified. Disgusted. Intrigued. And just like that, Mortal Kombat 9 became my first experience into the franchise. So one thing that fascinated me when I was a wee little GG mon was this upcoming scene. Now, finish him! Finish him? Huh. Yeah, right. Kill him! Whoa, whoa, wait a second. I'm not gonna kill anyone. Before going through the story mode, I knew how violent and gory the series could get with its fatalities. So when Johnny declined killing Baraka, I was kind of shocked. I thought everyone in the series was a violent killing machine, like when they performed their fatalities, but instead, Netherrealm Studios story mode, and even for their future story modes, feels like a Marvel movie. Maybe that's why a lot of young people like this series. The tournament takes an intermission till dawn, and Johnny goes looking for that zone blue sea. Be glad this joke was only cringe. I had a much worse one planned. You fought well. Thanks. Nice hat. You should be more respectful of Lord Raiden. He complimented his hat! What more do you want?! Raiden tries to explain the situation to Johnny, but Johnna thinks he's nuts, and continues to look for that blade to So this is where I noticed something interesting in the cutscenes. These cutscenes are pre-rendered 720p 30fps cutscenes. You can even find the video files in the game. A bit outdated for its quality now, but completely understandable back in 2011. However, in the next scene, the cutscene is real-time rendered 1080p 60fps. So the game is constantly switching from looking outdated, to looking pretty. Also, I just said that this was real-time rendered. Which means you can do stuff like this. You follow me when I clearly wish to be alone, then you upbraid me? I will not be scolded like some child. Johnny finds Blondie, and starts hitting on her. Then Sonya feels the cringe, and actually starts hitting on Johnny. Johnny beats her, then the movie shows up, to toss Johnny to the bottom of the pit. Kano then starts lasering Sonya. Johnny jumps back up to the stage, because he doesn't want to show what the bottom of the pit looks like. And here we get the coolest line from Johnny. Fans think my moves are all wire work and special effects. Truth is, I am the special effects. Ah, oh, chills. Literal chills. Johnny wins. Throw that on your... Barbie. Shrimp. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> yeah, 
I didn't know how bad he was at making Australian puns. So that's not a costume? Your actual military? <laughs> that's not a costume? Sonia, that's not a costume? And Sonia, who just got beat up by Johnny and lasered by Connor, uses her Logan powers to fully heal up and is off to save Jax. A pretty good start for Johnny Cage, from a naive man who's just fighting for glory, starts to learn to save and care for others, and we will never, never see, see him be useful in this game, game ever again. again. Sonya finds Jax in a prison cell. Fun fact, you can actually see how they came to Shang Tsung's island by reading Jax's bio. They were chasing Kano all the way to Shang Tsung's island, and just as they cornered him, the inhabitants on the island stop them, and force them to join the tournament. Then they get ambushed by Shang Tsung. Shang calls out Sub-Zero. I'd like to imagine Sub-Zero was waiting in a corner patiently for Shang to finally call him out. Sonya beats him. Raiden then magically appears out of nowhere. <coughs> Raiden stops Sonya from fighting Shang Tsung, because Yu Kang must be the one to challenge him. Raiden uses a distraction to help Sonya and Jax escape. You aided their escape. You allowed them to escape. Sonya and Jax then arrive to Shang Tsung's gardens. Fun fact about this stage. The stages in this game are all based off of stages from the original trilogy. The garden however, is actually an original stage made from this game. Or, a better way to put it, an amalgamation of three stages from the first game. The pit, palace gates, and warrior shrine. Shang Tsung's garden also shows up in Scorpion's Revenge. I'm giving you all this info because I think the stage is kinda pretty. Then Kitana and Jade unfairly show up to bully Sonya. Seriously, Seriously? I can't believe they're forcing Sonya to take on two people at the same time. So unfair. Especially for newer players. Sonya wins, and the chopper finally arrives. A man has fallen into the river in Lego City! Then Kano challenges Sonya. Pretty boy ain't gonna save you this time. I'm so pretty. Sonya wins, but Shang Tsung doesn't allow Sonya to take Kano away. Because he still wants to do business with the Black Dragon later. At least help Jax, he needs a medic. <laughs> bitch! Bastard. Bitch! Yeah. Bitch! Bitch! Raiden shows up to give Jax his thunder hand massages. That's amazing. Wow. That seems very useful. I sure hope it'll come in handy in the future. What should we do besides standing around looking pretty? I'm so pretty. Raiden then gets the gang together to win the tournament. This will also be the last time you see Sonya be, be useful, useful in this, this game, game ever, ever again. again. Next we see Scorpion fighting in the tournament. He faces Kung Leo first, who snuck into the tournament as a masked guard, still waiting for them to add this skin. Scorpion wins, and then he faces the furry, and wins. Raiden says revenge bad to Scorpion, because he doesn't want to handle Noob Saibot's annoying teleports, and he'll convince the Elder Gods to restore the Shirai Ryu. We then head to Shang Tsung's throne room, which is personally my favorite stage, specifically because of the heavy rain. The throne room also makes an appearance in the end of Scorpion's Revenge, but it looks terrible, because there's not enough rain. We see our fighters chatting happily with each other, including Kitana Jade and Kano, I'm a popular guy. Everyone loves me. Scorpion wants to join the fun, but he instead gets bullied by the mean Lin Kui. Okay I'd like to get into rand mode about this. Regardless of how I feel about the 1v2 from a gameplay standpoint, this is horrible from a story perspective. How is a 1v2 allowed in the tournament? Outside of the tournament I get, but during your single elimination martial arts tournament? Why is Raiden not calling out this bullshit? And another thing, this makes the two characters that lose in the 1v2, feel especially weak. Losing to an opponent, whatever, losing to an opponent while you have a partner, that's embarrassing. A very simple method that can fix this, and still showcase the tag team mechanics, is to have the player also have another fighter. This would fix all my issues with the 1v2s, gameplay and story wise. Why even have the tag team mechanic in your game, if I can't fucking use it in the story mode? Anyways, Scorpion wins, and Sub-Zero finally shows up to fight Scorpion. Scorpion wins, but he doesn't want to kill Sub-Zero, 
Quan Chi then shows him a PowerPoint presentation that makes him feel the cringe. Sub Zero denies killing the Shirai Ryu, but Scorpion has already activated Ghost Rider's level 3. Back at the throne room, everyone is chatting gleefully. Even Kano Kitana and Jade. Then Scorpion brings back Sub Zero's skull and drops it. Millions of AMV fans creamed at this moment. Scorpion broke his promise with Raiden. But, let's be fair here. I don't think the Elder Gods would even consider bringing the Shirai Ryu back with how useless they are. And even if they did, we know how well that went in Armageddon. An unfortunate end. He once defended Earthrealm from the Netherrealm armies of Shinnok and Quan Chi. I am not going to spend hours playing that shitty game just to understand what the fuck Raiden is talking about. Raiden then starts taking jabs at Cyrax. The Lin Kuei have a history of making ruinous choices. Such as the Cyber Initiative. Did you speak out against the Lin Kuei's participation in this tournament? were invited by Shang Tsung. He pays you to kill Earthrealm warriors. <laughs> Betraying your own realm? I expect better, even from an assassin. <laughs> Emotional, damn it! Cyrex then crosses the pit. By the way, I don't usually bring up the stuff that happens in the background, but there is a literal fucking volcano erupting, destroying part of the stage. How are you so calm? Cyrax gets ambushed by Shiva and Baraka. Because Shang Tsung has fired Cyrax, Shiva knows about the dumb 1v2 fights that have been happening, but she wants an honorable single combat, so she pushes Baraka aside to fight Cyrax alone. Actual queen. Hashtag Shiva for calm. Cyrax beats them both, and confronts Shang Tsung about this. I've already talked about how dumb this is in my Shang Tsung sucks video. So just go watch that to see me have a meltdown for this dumbass. Cyrax then faces the pretty man. That's so pretty. Ready for your beatdown, sunshine? Here it comes. Cyrax beats Johnny, but he doesn't kill him. Sector and Cyrax get into an argument, and Cyrax wins. Cyrax sees the corruption of the Lin Kui, and decides to stand up for himself and leave. A great redemption arc for this character. Hoping for bright things for this guy's future. We move on to chapter 5 Liu Kang. As Shang Tsung introduces his next fighter. He is many warriors. Their souls fused into one being. As a wee little gg mon. I thought Ermac was so cool. Stuffing a bunch of souls into one body. That's so rad. We are many. You are one. We will destroy you. Ah, oh, chills. Literal chills. Liu Kang defeats him. Ermac is just, uh. <laughs> Poor Ermac. No one's gonna, like, help out Ermac. <laughs> Katana just walked past him. After the battle, Katana tries to assassinate Liu, but he instead puts two footprints onto her butt. Liu Kang wins, and we get a kind of cute scene between these two characters. You must kill me. I will not. This encounter never took place. You have disgraced no one. I hope we meet again. Under different circumstances. How adorable. And we never see these two flirt again in this whole entire game. We then see Liu Kang facing his final challenges. Scorpion! Okay, let's go Scorpion. Fighting with Scorpion! Uh, no, 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 no! Mr. Raiden, not calling out Scorpion needing to fight two people is one thing. But when it's your own teammate, come on Raiden. Do you know how much I suffered here? Liu Kang wins and faces his next challenge. Goro. What's a Goro? It's a movie, Johnny. Liu Kang gets teleported to Goro's lair. Hello. I did not expect to fight in this tournament. I was not expecting you to be so well hidden. Is that a thing with Outworld people? Big, chunky, muscular men can have sneak 100 while skinny assassin ladies get caught instantly? Show yourself, Jade. I know you're following me. Again. Liu Kang defeats Goro. He's not dead yet, Liu Kang. <laughs> you don't need to. You don't need to do that. <laughs> then Liu Kang faces his final challenge. Face me in Mortal Kombat. Liu Kang wins the tournament, and Earthrealm is saved. However, Raiden's amulet cracks again, meaning there is still something wrong. They need to fix. They return to the Wuxi Academy to give Liu Kang a medal. Interestingly, the academy is not a playable stage in the game. And upon closer inspection, 
I think this is pulled straight from Mortal Kombat vs DC Universe. Kind of cute. Makes me wonder what else was taken from that game. Later, Shang Tsung shows up. He proposes a new tournament. The Emperor proposes a single tournament to replace the current system of 10. Raiden refuses. And so Shang ambushes the Shaolin monks with Takatins. Raiden realizes that by not accepting the tournament, Outworld will keep attacking them. And also they kidnap Sonya. So Raiden accepts Shang's offer and joins the new Mortal Kombat tournament. They head to Shao Kahn's throne room, and Johnny asks where Liu Kang and Kung Lao are. And why aren't the Kung Fu twins here helping us? Interestingly, they actually show this in a flashback from MKX, where Raiden, Liu Kang, and Kung Lao fight Baraka and Evora to free their Shaolin brothers. Jax is first to fight in the tournament, and he faces Baraka. Damn you ugly. <laughs> Damn you ugly. Wait. Didn't Baraka just get beat up by Raiden? He must have that Sonya Blade regeneration. Jax wins. Where's Sonya? Tell me, Major Briggs. Do you and she do anything other than rescue one another? <laughs> Your next opponent will be... What is it? You have a nice cock. Excellent. The tournament is postponed, and the gang decide to use this time to look for Sonya. They head to an unknown location. So what's the deal with you and Sonya anyway? For five minutes! Could you not be yourself? For five minutes! But if it's not like that... Ah! Jax beats up Johnny, and then a random lady shows up, and he beats her up too. Next we head to the Deadpool. Now 20, now 20, oh my gosh! What is it with your Shokan and underground cesspools? Those aren't Shokans though. They get into a fight. And they save Sonya. Sonya then uses her device, which for some reason they did not confiscate. That's weird. I've got two sets of readings, heavy tech signals, both of them. But Sub-Zero and Smoke aren't cybernized yet. Anyways, the gang decide to investigate these two signals to see if they are the ones that need to win in Raiden's visions. We head to the Wastelands as we see Smoke and Qi Liang. Qi Liang now holds the name Sub-Zero to honor the death of his brother. They came to Outworld to look for the one who killed Bihan. They separate to look for the killer. Be stealthful as the night and deadly as the dawn. Aren't you too adorable? Bye bye. You there! The Emperor was wise to send me here. <laughs> you there! Wise though your Emperor might be, he was foolish to send his housemate. <laughs> housemate? Smoke winds. Sleep well, Princess. GG, housemaid. And heads to the living forest to look for more clues. Smoke sees Shang and Kano playing with Jax's heavy weapons variation. Smoke fights Kano and wins. Reptile comes for support, and Shang takes the form of Bihan to taunt Smoke. I quite like this. I kind of wish Shang Tsung did this more in the story. Smoke wins, but of course Reptile isn't defeated yet, so he starts beating up Smoke. I have disobeyed the directive. Oh. It was just Sector. I'm not disappointed. Stop looking at me like that. The Cyber Initiative and the Lin Kui has begun, and Sector is here to turn Smoke into a robot. Smoke beats him, but he is then ambushed by other members of the Lin Kui, who all can use Sector's bullshit teleport. Raiden shows up to save him and the three of them head to the tournament to look for Sub-Zero. We head to the Soul Chamber, where we see Sub-Zero freezing two guards that Sonya thought were Shokans. You can also see two Shadow Priests appear for one frame. The Soul Chamber is a pretty creepy looking stage, but you know how we can make it look even more gross? Add tentacles baby. We're going weird with this shit. Then Sub-Zero gets ambushed by. You are ordered to return to the Lin Kuei Temple for assimilation. Cyrax! So, sadly, Cyrax could not escape the Lin Kui. He was turned into a mindless servant. I feel bad for this character. In the midway timeline, he actually does regain his sense of being and joins the special forces. But in the NRS timeline, he'll just stay as a mindless jobber for the next 8 years until MK11, where he has one brief moment where he gains back his humanity. If you want a better ending for Cyrax, I'd recommend his arcade ending in MK9. Sub-Zero defeats him. 
The readings were getting stronger and now they're gone, I- You know you two, can just look up right? Sub-Zero meets Sonya and Jax, and they tell him about his brother's death. Then a Mac appears. You have disturbed our regeneration process. <laughs> you guys are too loud. I am trying to sleep. Honestly, I feel bad for Ermac. He was literally just trying to regenerate here, and we were disturbing him. It's just like, we're really rude, honestly. You know what? Jax deserves this, okay? I said it. Jax deserves this. <laughs> and he breaks Jax's arms for over 16 seconds. You two really just let him suffer for that long. Do you and she do anything other than rescue one another? Sub-Zero beats Sir Mac, and then he heads off to look for his brother's killer. We head to the Coliseum, and hey, Scarlet, Stuntman, and Classic Smoke all made it here. Kitana beats a random Shaolin. I failed. I deserve death. I have failed my father. You must kill me. Sub-Zero wishes to confront Scorpion, but instead he gets Reptile. Lucky bastard, he beats him. I would kill you, but that is not my purpose here. You weren't so nice to him and your character trailer though. Sub-Zero asks again, and this time, Shao Kahn agrees. In the original timeline, Scorpion knew that Qi Liang was a good person, and wished to become his guardian, to atone for murdering his older brother. Anyways, this Scorpion doesn't give a fuck, and just wants to kill Qi Liang. Sub-Zero wins, and just as he's about to give the finishing blow, the Lin Kui show up to capture him. By saving Smoke from cybernization, someone else took his place. Katana! Father, Be I- Be gone! Katana! How is it that Earthrealm ninjas brazenly appear before Father, me? Father, I- Be gone! Katana! Be gone, Katana. How is it, Father? I Katana. Be gone, Katana. Katana. Be gone, Katana. What? You suck. Despicable swine. <laughs> and here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Quite Oh, sad smoke. He looks so sad. Katana then heads to the wasteland. Katana! You follow me when I clearly wish to be alone. Earthrealm ninjas brazenly appear before me. I will not be scolded like some child. Be I... gone! Katana scolds Jade for following her. Katana, I... You follow me when I clearly wish to be alone. Yeah, I totally would be walking on a beach with a bunch of fucking dead bodies for my alone time. I will not be scolded like some child. Or housemaid. We will talk later. When you are in more of a mind to listen. Stop right there, criminal scum! Wait, Jade, do you not hear the lightning over there? Raiden tries to calmly confront Kitana by having Smoke and Johnny bully her. Kitana wins. Raiden tells Kitana to go to the flesh pits for answers, and that's where she heads to. Do you want to care about that man next to you, Kitana? Or is she just gonna pull another Ermac? Jade shows up to try and stop her, and Kitana beats her. Kitana enters the flesh pits. Fun fact. In the MKX comics, it stated that the Flesh Pits is on Shang Tsung's island, which is located somewhere between Earthrealm and Outworld. So I don't think walking through the living forest is the right way. She looks into the Flesh Pits, and discovers the horrifying truth. Shang Tsung created a hotter version of herself. That is an objective fact by the way. Kitana beats Melina. Then Shang Tsung shows up. Do you think my father will stand for this... these... Abominations you have created here! I am merely perfecting you, princess. Objective fact. I will drag you before Shao Kahn by your pointed beard. By your pointed beard? Kitana wins. <coughs> Gotta drag you all the way to my you dad. Will stand before my father and confess your deed. <laughs> Kitana's kinda strong. <laughs> she like held him all the way up. You will confess to my father. Kitana drags Shang Tsung all the way from his island back to Outworld. Kitana tells Shao Kahn about this, but it turns out, Shao Kahn was the one who commissioned the sexy Kitana OC, and has no more use for Kitana. Escort her to the tower. I will make an example of her. <laughs> Kitana! How is it that Earthrealm ninjas brazenly appear before me? How could you? My own father! Be gone! Jade overhears all of this, and is off to save her. 
we head to the armory, as we see an adorable tar cotton playing with a gun. Adding this to my funny tea cotton meme folder, Jade shows up. No one enters the tower. You are an excellent guard dog, Baraka, but you must learn to hear. These aren't the same tar cottons, Kotal. A better con would offer them a warm hand, not cold steel. Good boy. I don't know if I should say, racist, or mommy. Good boy. Jade enters the tower. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This stage has a new name in this game. It's now called the Evil Monastery. How edgy are these dark priests? No one is allowed in the tower. As you can see, I am here. Ooh. Jade beats Shiva and tries to free Kitana, but the After Effects plugins are just too strong, so she goes to Raiden for help. She escapes the tower and meets Melina. By the gods! By the Elder Gods! She beats her. I must find Raiden. He is here. Oh hey, it's the Kung Fu Twins. Glad you guys are back after saving the Shaolin monks, and it just took 5 chapters. Smoke thinks Jade beat up Kitana, and wants to fight Jade. What a character arc, from housemate oh, to caring for a friend. Also, I feel like having both Kitana and Melina wearing their classic costumes could help with the misunderstanding. But to think this is Kitana, is kind of an insult to Kitana. Jade beats him, and the gang just sit there and watch him get beat up. Kung Leo and Liu Kang go to the tower to save Kitana, while the rest head to the Coliseum for the tournament. Liu Kang fights Shiva, while Kung Leo fights Noob Sabot. He beats him, and Goro shows up to fight. From the champion of Mortal Kombat for 500 years, to now just a guard dog. Good boy. Biggest glow down ever, Kung Leo kicks Noob Sabot aside to fight Goro, and wins. In the bio. It says that Kung Leo's motive for joining the Mortal Kombat tournament was to slay Goro and avenge the great Kung Leo, but he doesn't mention this at all when he defeats his mortal enemy. Maybe Goro losing in the tournament has lowered his status so much that Kung Leo doesn't give a shit about him anymore. I do not fear you. I pity you. Goro says that Katana is at the Coliseum. Come on Raiden, you could have called to notify the Kung Fu Twins. Or just teleport there to tell them yourself. At the Coliseum, we see Ermac beating Johnny Cage. For how many losses the Outworld lackers get, Ermac has been doing pretty good. The Kung Fu twins see Katana, who has changed to her alternate costume. Dunno how I feel about someone changing her clothes off screen. Liu Kang wants to save Katana, but there are no more fighters to fight for Earthrealm. Smoke and Johnny Cage have been defeated. And I no longer sense Jackson Briggs or Sonya Blade's presence in Outworld. Well, Jade is technically on your side now. You can still ask her. Liu Kang doesn't want to fight, because Raiden said that he wasn't the one. When I am not he who must win. But mostly it's because he's simping for Katana. Sh so, in a desperate attempt, or perhaps Raiden realizes his potential, Raiden sends Kung Leo to fight. He starts off pretty good, defeating both Quan Chi and Shang Tsung. Then he faces. Oh, kitty cat. Kitty kitty kitty. Gracie, come on. Ma! There's a strange fucking cat out here. Looks like. Looks like Grandma the thing or something. Ma! He beats Kintero. And things truly do feel like they are working out for Kung Leo. But then, the most tragic scene in all of Mortal Kombat happens. See you, Raiden? Earthwell is free. Shao Kahn snaps Kung Leo's neck, ending his life, ending his chance to save the world. So, I'm about to drop the hottest take on this channel, since my Devora video, and since my recent Raiden video, here I go. I like this death scene. You thought my community post on April Fools was a joke? The real joke is that it wasn't one. Okay but let me explain my reasonings while I barricade my door before the fourth snake comes in to cut me up. I will find you and I will cut you up. This whole entire chapter has been an underdog story. Kung Leo wanted to prove himself to Raiden in the MK1 tournament. I am Liu Kang's equal. That remains to be seen. Watch and see. But he failed. Now. He's given a second chance. Raiden allows him to fight in the MK2 tournament. And surprisingly, Kung Leo does really well. He actually defeats all of his opponents. 
This just might be his chance to prove himself, and Shao Kahn took it from him. They stole it from me, Karma! They took it! I'm sure people have complained about how Shao Kahn broke the rules. How is this allowed? And that's the point. Shao Kahn did a cheap shot, he did a low blow, and that makes Shao Kahn especially scummy. Despicable swine! It actually makes him a piece of shit. So right afterwards, Netherrealm Studios does something that I wish they did more often in their games. They let you play as Liu Kang, to avenge Kung Leo. Throughout the whole game, you're only allowed to play one character per chapter. So when the game suddenly switches to Liu Kang, it feels especially impactful. I understand that this moment, was also the catalyst to all the Kung Leo L's he'll have in the next decade. But even still, I think this Kung Leo death was much better handled than future ones. Let's compare his death from the game to Battle of the Realms. All Kung Leo's death achieved in Battle of the Realms, was Liu Kang being kinda sad. And that's all. It was Raiden's death, that really motivated Liu Kang to fight Shao Kahn. In MK9 however, Kung Leo's death, makes Shao Kahn much more hateable, motivates Liu Kang to avenge his Shaolin brother, and makes Raiden feel especially guilty, since he was the one who allowed Kung Leo to risk his life. I know a lot of people, think this scene is a bullshit way to kill off Kung Leo. But to me, it was emotional, especially when I was a wee little GG mon. Up to this point in the game, no good guy has died yet, there haven't really been any stakes yet, so to see this death, really shocked me, and saddened me, and to see Liu Kang avenge his fallen brother, also touched me, and satisfied me, again, this is just my opinion, you're welcome to argue or disagree with me. But I personally think this is one of the best scenes Netherrealm Studios has done. By the Elder Gods the barricade is down. Liu Kang defeats Shao Kahn, and gives him one final blow. Earthrealm is victorious, but the price was a heavy toll. And unfortunately, the amulet cracks again, you know. I feel bad for Ermac, he defeated Johnny Cage, and is probably ready to take on the next opponent. But since Shao Kahn got defeated early, his fight has been cancelled. Poor poor Ermac, the rest of the Outworld fighters discuss who should be the next leader. Melina is his heir, she should rule. Melina? She exists only because of my sorcery. And you breathe because I restrain mine. <laughs> because of you? Outworld can no longer merge with Earthrealm! But... It's your fault that Earthrealm won Shao Kahn. Shao Kahn survived the punch through the stomach. Because he's just that awesome. Shao Kahn isn't dead. Just not blinded. Quan Chi proposes a new plan. Invasion. Uh, invasion? So... The real reason Shao Kahn can't invade Earthrealm... Is not because of the rules of Mortal Kombat. They straight up say that in the game. She realized that the safeguards afforded by the Elder Guards through Mortal Kombat are but fiction. So, Sindel, as a final fuck you to Shao Kahn for invading Edenia, and fuck you to the Elder Gods for being completely useless, sacrificed herself to create a barrier to protect Earthrealm, so they may not suffer the same fate as Edenia. And so by resurrecting Sindel, the ward will be nullified. If you think this all sounds really stupid, it's because it is. And it definitely wasn't like this in the original timeline. So, I don't like sh** talking NRS for things they do in the future. Cause it's not like they planned it while making MK9. But Twindell's retcon from Mortal Kombat Aftermath is just too Pretty goddamn ridiculous that I just have to talk about it. In MK Aftermath, it turns out, Sindel was always evil, and she and Shao Kahn are a superpower couple. If that's the case, then why the fuck did you put a barrier to protect Earthrealm, to prevent your hobby from invading? And also... After being forced to wed Shao Kahn, I ran afoul of Quan Chi. Then the miscreant murdered me, and staged my death as a suicide. If Quan Chi was the one who murdered Sindel, how did she sacrifice herself to put that barrier around Earthrealm then? You guys have officially made me lose my- Quan Chi then goes to the desert to revive Sindel, and mind control her to serve Shao Kahn. Even though she's already on their side. Some interesting facts about this stage. It is speculated that this could be located in Edenia, because of the fallen Sindel statue. 
Maybe this was her grave. And now it's covered in sand after 10,000 years. You can sometimes see Cyrax flailing his arms in the background. A reference to the original stage. And my favorite fact. The stage is called the desert. But in the original, it's called Jade's Desert. A desert owned by Jade. I just find it really funny that the assassin lady and bodyguard of Katana owns a fucking desert. And now with Sindel back, the invasion can begin. We head to Earth Realm as we see the invasion. Look, the Tarkatans learned how to use guns. They grow up so fast. Striker and Cabal are reporting the situation. 17, 18. Cabal, call it in. Base. We count 18. 18? 18 what? Tarkatans? I count more than 30, my dude. What is that? It's a sexy boy. Pistols! Hey, Reptile, you are not supposed to have the noxious variation from MKX yet. Reptile knocks out Cabal with his Yoshi tongue, despite it not reaching him, and Striker too. Striker beats him up. <laughs> Spitting? Sticking out your tongue? Bet your mama's real proud. Bet your mama's real proud. Bet your mama's real proud. My- His mom is dead! Bastard. Bastard. They then go to the first floor. Striker, check her out. Check her out! What do you think? Friend what or do you foe? Foe. Dress like that? <laughs> Definitely foe. <laughs> Cover me. You have to repeat that. Foe! Foe! Once you see Katana, my friend. This isn't helpful. Foe. Dress like that? Definitely foe. Striker beats her. Got him! Easy, 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 foe. Housemate. Housemate. You're coming with me. Lizard dude who spits acid and wants to kill me. Leave him on the roof. Hot sexy naked lady who wants to eat my face. You're coming with me. Raiden shows up. Moans. <laughs> Refuses to elaborate. Leaves. That guy just shot lightning. From his hands. I just moved it with my mind. Kintero shows up. Spread out. Give him multiple targets. <laughs> ah! You told him to spread out so he doesn't get fired. Less ugly when they burn. That is such a nice comment for a burnt victim's Kintero. Striker beats Kintero. Never knew I had it in me. Did I just do that? He goes to look after Cabal. Then Ermac shows up and specifically toss Striker into the subway, just so we can see this beautiful stage. The Emperor will have your soul swallow this. Striker beats Ermac, then Nightwolf shows up, and he wants Striker to join Raiden's Earth Defenders. Striker agrees, and they head to Cabal, but someone has already taken him. So, I actually quite like this chapter. It shows just how chaotic the Outworld invasion is and we follow the perspective of two normal human beings. We're just normal men. What do you mean normal men? We're just innocent men. <laughs> what the? Poor Striker. It's just one after another weird ass like Mortal Kombat characters all trying to beat him up. However, surprisingly he's holding really well against his own. I also like Unburned Cabal's design here more than his MK11 version. Kind of wish they had it as a skin. Cabal wakes up in Outworld, because Kano saved him. And Kano also wants Cabal to come back to the Black Dragon, by giving him his old hook swords. Cabal rejects him, because he's a good boy now. Cabal doesn't pick up the hook swords, but instead uses the new ones he regenerated on his back. He defeats Kano. And then he picks up the old hook swords on the ground. Which hook swords were you using this whole time? He's also pretty calm about gaining super speed. Cabal forces Kano to bring him to Shao Kahn. We then see Matero's dead body. <laughs> dun, 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 As Melina sexily presents Motaro. Shao Kahn soul sucks Shant Sun and transfers his powers to Sindel. Cabal tries to ambush Shao Kahn. But is interrupted. Hey guys. Oh, so Noob is gonna try to stop me. Okay. Or oh, Melina? Which one? Oh no, oh no, oh no. Do not tell me. I swear to fuck! No! No one attacks the Emperor! No! Cabal wins. As we see Quan Chi, Shao Kahn, Sector, and Sindel standing around and enjoying the fight, Shao Kahn orders Quan Chi to close a portal. Quan Chi, seal the portal! 
which was still open this whole time for some reason. Did you really think I can't just reopen the portal? He also finally acknowledges his new speed powers. This speed's incredible. After I've been spamming it for the past hour, then he gets ambushed by Cyber Sub-Zero. Cabal wins. Then Shiva shows up, and she thinks because of Cabal's design, that he is also a Cyber Lin Kui. Why do you turn on your brother, Lin Kuei? That is not my brother. He's machine. I'm human. You do not appear human. That's kinda cute. Cabal beats her, then Raiden shows up to recruit Cabal, and help Sub-Zero. Jax recalibrates Cyber Sub-Zero, so that he is not controlled by the Lin Kui, and then he joins the good guys. So a bit of an opinion about this guy. This is NetherRealm Studios first original character in the series. I think it's really safe. Most of the members of the Lin Kui either die or turn into cyborgs. So Qi Liang turning into a robot is a pretty logical step for this character. Though, it does make him a bit forgettable compared to some of the other more creative new characters. Sub-Zero infiltrates the enemy base, cause they still think he's on their side. Earth Realm is missed. It will not be missed. Earth won't be missed. What kind of edgy line is this? Sector takes Sub-Zero to the subway, because he thinks Sub-Zero is compromised. Don't know why he didn't just confront Sub-Zero in front of his troops. Sub-Zero beats him, and starts pressing random buttons on Sector to get intel. Sector is ordered to escort military prisoners to the graveyard, so Sub-Zero goes to the bell tower to save them. We head to the bell tower. I love the laugh animations on those four armed characters. Sub-Zero freezes the bad guys, then he faces off against both the sub-bosses of MK1 and MK2, and beats them. Never mind Kintero, but Goro losing in a 1v2. Those fighters in the tournament in the last 500 years must have sucked ass. If Goro keeps losing to everyone today, then of course Kano breaks out of the ice to fight. Right? Nope. Sub-Zero's freezing ability is way too OP. Fix your game NRS. Then he faces. Test your luck. Sub-Zero. <laughs> he beats him. Then he heads to the graveyard. He sees that Quan Chi and Noob Saibot are creating a soul nado, which is why they need to grab a bunch of soldiers to sacrifice their souls. Sub-Zero reports this back to Raiden. Sub-Zero, we will disrupt the soul nado. And by we, I mean, just me. Everyone else here please continue to stand by and do nothing. Sub-Zero tries to stop them. Who is that? And Noob Saibot faces him. Noob reveals that he is Bihan Reborn. I kind of like this matchup. Both are corrupted versions of their former selves, fighting for what they believe is right. Sub-Zero wins, but the Sol Nado is formed. Nightwolf arrives, and tells Sub-Zero to leave, because Your soul is not safe! So Sub-Zero runs all the way back to the hideout, and then Nightwolf fights Quan Chi. A cool detail I like here. In the background when you play as Sub-Zero, the Sol Nado isn't formed yet, but when you play as Night Wolf, the Sol Nado is finished. Night Wolf defeats Quan Chi, and then it turns into Night Wolf vs Noob Saibot. Night Wolf kicks Noob into the Sol Nado. Bye! Bye! See you in 2019! Bye bye! Ow! Oh. Which magically solves the problem. Earthrealm's fate is sealed, Night Wolf! Oh never mind. the self-destruct button was with me the whole time. Quan Chi slowly walks away from the explosion, and Night Wolf saves the day. We head back to the hideout, and... Alright, that's it. Enough of this! I'm going into rant mode. I have gone through the MK9 story mode many times in the past, so I quite remember the MK1 and MK2 portions of the game. But the MK3 portion was kind of a blur for me, and after playing through it again, I understood why. Nothing really happens. It starts off quite exciting, but then it turns into a fetch quest for 3 chapters, just to stop a green tornado. There are so many interesting things that happen in the original MK3 game. The Shokan and Centaurians conflict, the US government not believing Sonya and Jax when they warn them of the upcoming outworld invasion, Nightwolf protecting his land, Striker being the only survivor in his city, Scorpion turning good 
Cyrax's malfunction, Melina being able to read Kitana's thoughts. Where is Rain? Where's Rain, huh? Where's Rain at? Let's go, Rain, what you have, baby? So many interesting concepts, and yet what do they choose to adapt? The Solnado, which happens in the intro of MK3. This is such a horrible adaptation of MK3, but even without that, our 12 heroes pretty much stand around and do nothing for 4 chapters. Standing around here won't do us any good. You're actually wasting these characters. There is still so many interesting things I want to know about them. Liu Kang. How do you feel about Raiden's visions? How are you handling Kung Leo's death? How do you feel about you and Kitana's relationship? Sonya. What are the special forces up to? Are you worried for Jax's injuries? Jax. How are you handling your new augments? Johnny, how do you feel about all these crazy things happening? Smoke, how do you feel about your friend turning into a robot? How do you feel about the Lin Kui joining out world side? Sub-Zero, how does being a cyborg feel like? What do you think about the cyber initiative now that you are one? Kitana, how do you feel after finding about the truth of your past? What do you think of Liu Kang? Jade, how does it feel to betray out world with your best friend? Striker. What do you think of the invasion? Are you concerned for your friend Cabal? Cabal, how do you feel about your injuries and enhancements? Did Kano jog your memories of when you were in the Black Dragon? Night Wolf. Sorry I don't have much for you. The game hasn't done a good job building your character. They completely forgot about you in the MK2 portion. Um. How are your people? I guess. And there are definitely many things I want to know about Raiden. These are all questions that were set up in the previous chapters. I don't think it's unreasonable at all to ask these questions. I personally think the game should have ended after Shao Kahn's defeat in the MK2 tournament. And the MK3 invasion plot should have been a separate game. There is just too much wasted, wasted potential, potential that could have been used here. And instead we get a plot about saving soldiers that I don't give a shit about. After the Solnado is destroyed, Nightwolf returns to the hideout, and Raiden's amulet cracks again. Pissed off about this, Raiden consults the Elder Gods, and takes Liu Kang with him for some reason, then they get ambushed by the Cyber Lin Kui. Hum. It's too bad you don't have a device that can warn you earlier about this threat, so Raiden and Liu Kang can still be here to help. Nightwolf fights Cyrax, and now that the heroes are done with the table, the Shadow Priests can now use it for their own sacrificial rituals. Also, in the original game, this stage was actually a temple constructed for Shao Kahn. Maybe this is why they know the heroes are here. Nightwolf wins, then he faces Sector, and beats him too. And now we get the most infamous scene in all of Mortal Kombat. Sindel shows up, she screams, and ragdolls the Cyber and Kui's bodies. The heroes try to fight her. Come forward if you dare! I will finish what the Lin Kuei could not! Let's do this! Go! So, you thought me defending Kung Leo's death and Raiden's actions was a hot take? You know nothing. Jimmy Snore. Because I think, the Sindel massacre scene, is horrible. I have crazy opinions sometimes, but even I'm not that insane. I want to start with the action scene itself. Seriously? Seriously? Sindel is that strong? 
This isn't IP man. These are all very competent warriors that have proven themselves throughout the game, and none of them can even leave a scratch. Also, despite having 10 people, they really chose to go one at a time, while they wait in line, as they watch their comrades die. Even if they are afraid of hitting their teammates, they can still shoot projectiles. Did they all just forget they had this ability? It's widely accepted that the reason why Sindel is so OP here, is because Shao Kahn gave her Shang Tsung's soul, and I'd buy that more, if it increased her strength, magic, or speed. But she beat them all with her karate chop matrix kung fu. How would more power increase that? Maybe. Shang Tsung's soul taught her all those kung fu moves. But I doubt that too, since Shang Tsung himself never won a fight in this whole game. Kung Lao's death made me feel emotional. This made me feel empty. As a wee little GG mon, I said to myself, what was the point of developing these characters for more than half the game, if this is the outcome we get? Their deaths achieve nothing! They had to retroactively fix this problem in future games, whether it be by reviving them, bring them back through time travel, or just straight up forgetting about them. In general, I think this was done mainly for shock value, like, OMG, I can't believe they do something so dull and daring here, but the consequences of this, is future games suffering narratively by this decision, and it basically sours my feelings towards this story mode. I truly believe this scene left a permanent scar on the NRS saga. We cut to Raiden with the Elder Gods. Elder Gods, I beseech you. Earth Realm is in danger. No, we then cut back to the cathedral. Oh no. The table. Now how is the priest supposed to decipher the body? Nightwolf does a Hail Mary sacrifice move, to bring down Sindel and himself. Raiden and Liu Kang come back to the cathedral just in time to witness this. Seriously, Seriously? it took you guys this long to come back? Nightwolf fought both Cyrax and Sector, and then the Sindel massacre happens. The fucking cutscene with the Elder Gods was one minute. We're Raiden and Liu Kang waiting in the reception area this whole time? Does time move slower in the heavens or something? They find Katana dying, you know. It'd be nice if you remember your thunder hand massage move. Katana dies, and Liu Kang truly loses hope for Raiden. Raiden is desperate, so he decides to make a deal with Netherrealm to take on Outworld's invasion. Raiden goes to hell, and he sees... Wait a minute. <gasps> Scorpion? Is that you? Oh my god, that makeup! And that dress! Where have you been for the last eight chapters? Did Guan Chi forget about you? Did Noob Saibot replace you? Does Ed Boon not want you to do evil things on the screen? What have you been doing? Raiden treats Scorpion like a dog. Fetch your master, Scorpion. Good boy. Raiden then meets Guan Chi. I seek cooperation between Earthrealm and Earth Realm. Oh. And then Guan Chi proceeds to summon his stands to gang up on Raiden. Raiden then has a Eureka. Shao Kahn needs to win, so the Elder Gods can punish him. He must, must win. win. Refers to Shao Kahn. Raiden returns to Earth Realm. He sees Liu Kang. My friends are all dead. All hope for Earth Realm is lost. But I'm still gonna bitch about how useless Raiden is. Back from the Nether Realm empty-handed, I see. Raiden tells Liu Kang the plan, and Liu thinks Raiden is stupid. He's stupid. So they fight, and Raiden shocks Liu Kang to death. It'd be nice if you remember your thunder hand massage move. By the way, I'm kind of skimming through this, because I already went through Raiden's bullshit in more detail in my Raiden Sucks video. So go check that out to hear more about my opinions on this. Shao Kahn finally enters Earth Realm, and no one else. Hum. Where are all the other Outworld villains? <laughs> Oh yes, we forgot you can't talk in this game. <laughs> ah, screw it. I don't show up in this game anymore anyways. Why aren't we witnessing Shao Kahn's victory? I don't know. You'd think Shao Kahn would want an audience to cheer him on for his epic entrance. He, he built a freaking throne on the rooftop for crying out loud. It would be very cool if all the heroes and all the villains have one last epic battle to determine the fate of Earthrealm.
Yeah. Wait, no. 90% of the heroes have died already. So we'd pretty much just be there to bully Raiden. So I guess for fairness, we shouldn't show up. Understandable. That would be rude of us. And Raiden was just getting up on another one. Hello there! I'm Farah, and this is Tor. Uh. And we were wondering what our next mission is. Well, currently, it's nothing. So how about you guys just sit there and chill with us? Oh, okay. In fact, how about we play a game? A game? There is only one game that comes to mind. That's right. Let us play Poke. <coughs> Hello there. Mind if we join you for poker? No, no, no. Get lost. Get out of here. This joke doesn't work with you guys being here. Because the four of us aren't in Mortal Kombat 11. But all of you are in that game. So the joke doesn't work with you guys. So get lost. Get out of here, you moochers. Why are <laughs> Shao Kahn enters Earth Realm, and Johnny and Sonya try to stop him. Alright Johnny, time to release those god-killing powers. Johnny never wins a fight after Chapter 1 and Sonya 2. I have a theory, that his powers come from his tuxedo. Shao Kahn then starts tossing Raiden around, and finally, the Elder Gods appear. Just slam it down, Shao Kahn. Just slam it down right now. You can prevent Raiden from becoming super OP here, dude. They give Raiden the power to annihilate Shao Kahn, and Raiden finally uses a thunder hand massages. <laughs> ah, feels good. This massage feels really good. Mm, yeah, massage my titties. Raiden slash the Elder Gods beat Shao Kahn with dog sounding dragons. And thus, Earth Realm is saved. Oh my gosh, my head is so dizzy. Oh. Yes, clearing up the skies. That's, that's literally how I feel right now. Finally, this bullshit is over. So, interestingly, they actually added this clear sky version of the rooftop as a stage 2. So that makes the rooftop the stage with the most amount of orbs in MK9. Day, dusk, and dawn. Hold it. Dusk, and dawn? Fighting Shao Kahn took over 12 hours, the heroes leave to mourn the dead, and we get the final twist. It turns out, this was all a plan by Shinnok and Quan Chi. They want Shao Kahn to merge the realms, so that he can be purged by the Elder Gods, and this all worked out perfectly. Your plan worked to perfection, Lord Shinnok. Sindel's revival, the Sol Nado, Raiden figuring out what to do. Have you considered- How lucky you are that none of these backfired and benefited Shao Kahn. If Sindel survived, that would have been a very strong asset for Shao. If the Sol Nado went off, that would help Shao Kahn invade even more. And if Raiden dies, then either. Raiden wouldn't be there to stop Liu Kang from fighting Shao Kahn, causing Armageddon, which would fuck over everyone. Or, no one would be there to be possessed by the Elder Gods, to purge Shao Kahn. Keep in mind, the Elder Gods couldn't get rid of Shao Kahn with their laser beam, and needed Raiden to soften him up for the purging to work. So honestly, Quan Chi got really lucky. I mean, the plan worked, worked to perfection. perfection. And soon, Shinnok will be ready to attack Earth Realm. And that is the end of Mortal Kombat 2011. Miserable. That's how I feel about this ending. I feel like I just went through The Last of Us Part 2 again. Characters I like getting killed off. So it makes me not want to continue the story. And then the writers try to shove down a victory down my throat that I don't want. I don't want it. I don't want the Elder Gods to be right. I don't want this win. Anyways, let's get to my final review. I'll start with some positives. The music. This is something I don't usually compliment, especially for NRS games, because it's usually quite bland and forgettable. Feels kind of MCU-ish, but I personally really adore the music in this game. You can tell I like the OSG because I actually put the songs as background music in this video. Most of the songs in the game are remixes of the OSG from the original trilogy, and I think they do a good job bringing these old classics into a modern light.
Another fan service that I really appreciate are the stages. Just like the songs, most of these stages are taken from the original trilogy. I love looking for the easter eggs and changes they made for these arenas, and something I think that is very commendable, is that this whole entire story is revolved around the original game stages. Now you might be thinking, well, isn't this how most fighting game story modes work? They have a story mode, and then they have stages that are made for the story, but the thing about mk 9 story, is that it's the other way around. The game has remade the original stages, and they have to use them to retell the story of MK1, 2 and 3, which sounds a lot more impressive when put that way. And overall, I must say, this game might just have my favorite music, and stages, in the whole entire franchise. And that's how I feel in general about the story of this game. On one hand, it has so many awesome fan service moments from the original games, whether it be the characters, stages, music, and even some parts of the story. It really does feel like the developers put a lot of love and care trying to reimagine the original trilogy. But on the other hand, there's just so much stupid shit in the story. Dumb rules that Shang Tsung makes up in the MK1 tournament. Villains that have a cool intro, but then just end up as jobbers for the rest of the story. The third act is just bad. It's either too bland, and nothing really happens or too much happens, and the ending just feels really depressing. And then the Elder Gods... By the Elder Gods! Fuck. These... assholes. They might just be the worst depicted Elder Gods in the whole entire franchise. In conclusion, this story mode has a lot of dumb shit. However, I do think it's still a pretty good place to start if you want to get into the Mortal Kombat franchise. It summarizes the story of the first three games in a bite-sized manner, and it does a pretty good job introducing the core characters of the franchise. I will admit that I do have a bit of a soft spot for this game, because it was my introduction to this series, and as a wee little GG mon, I did like this crazy story, and from then on, I followed each NRS game closely which led me to who I am today. Someone who shit talks NRS games for a living. Hey guys, what is up? Sonic XD here, and thank you all so much for watching this video. The Mortal Kombat 9 Sucks video has been something that I've been requested to make since, like, 2015. Back when I was doing my Mortal Kombat X stuff. Back then I was thinking, well, one, I'm not known for Mortal Kombat, and two, why would people want to listen to my opinions about Mortal Kombat 9? It's been out for so long, and there's plenty of other people who have made content about it. Uh, eight years later, and here we are. Uh, made this big-ass video. <laughs> Technically, it's actually three videos, and all together, it's like an hour and 35 minutes. That's crazy. Honestly, the thing that I really feel that's interesting about Mortal Kombat 9 is how much I can just go on and on and on and on about what happens in the story mode because there's just so much they don't explain and you have to get into like fan fiction territory or like try to look at other content that exists and use that as like ways to interpret things in the story whether it be i don't know raiden's visions uh the rules uh character backstories and stuff if i really wanted to i bet i could make this video even longer than the four snakes critique of mortal kombat 9 i could go to two to three hours if i really wanted to but in the end i felt like i had to just focus on the things that i thought were the most interesting and i wanted to highlight and i didn't want this video to become like a super duper rambling 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 type video because I, I still wanted it to be entertaining so i'm just saying this because I could make the video longer, but I feel like these are just the things that I thought were the most interesting that I wanted to mention in this video. After this, I'm going to be having two more videos. Next week, I'm going to be uploading my full walkthrough of going through the story mode, which was hell because I set it to expert mode and I've never played this game and I suck at fighting games, so it was hell. And then next next week, I'm going lower into Nether Realm because I decided to challenge the Challenge Tower 300 as Reptile, and that was hella hell it should be entertaining my, my suffering should be entertaining hopefully <laughs> and now i'd like to give some thanks to some people who helped me out on this video first off i'd like to thank the four snake thank you so much for not only the johnny cameo in this video but also the three cameos you made in my raiden video again i just asked for one thing and you gave me so much more that whole part where raiden was roasting me because i said he sucked in mortal kombat 9 but as it turns out i did not plan that and because the video was supposed to be me defending raiden so i had to like kind of like go back and forth <laughs> with the horse snake that was all new i didn't plan all that basically i let him cooked and he served so <laughs> thank you for that the horse snake <laughs>
Next up, I'd like to thank True Underdog. Thank you so much for doing the awesome intro for this video. I thought it'd be fun because I suck at fighting games and to get True Underdog, who is super duper in fighting games, to do like this little coach montage would be a very, very fun way to start the video. So thank you so much for that. Also, thank you for recording the Mortal Kombat 9 background footage for the Four Snakes part. Yes, like he helped them with that. So this was actually a very big collaborative project, as you can see. <laughs> Next up, I'd like to thank BK Hat. Thank you so much for, again, with the amazing pole dancing sexy reptile image. I didn't really use this image a lot in this video, but you will see it as the thumbnail for my challenge tower video. So look forward to that. And next up, I'd like to thank a more special person, the Sushi Sensei. This person has been an amazing fan of mine for a very long time, and they've drawn all these super goofy, awesome fan arts of my characters and stuff. And I used a lot of their fan arts in this video so that's why i thought i'd give a special shout out and also thank you for drawing fan arts of me all these years i love them thank you so much and the last person i'd like to thank well more or less just mention is myself hee <laughs> hee hi <laughs> if you guys were wondering who drew the ggmons uh it was me if you guys are curious and also i had a lot of fun doing my own skit with the reptile suit the full video is like two minutes of me just doing a bunch of shenanigans maybe i might release that someday i don't know i mean maybe this video gets a hundred thousand likes i'll just release it raw and see what happens with it <laughs> i channeled my inner the four snake skit mode to get all those out basically so what is next for this channel? Well, other than the two videos that are coming out soon, I'm going on vacation. That's right, I will be going to Europe for the next month and I will literally be gone. I won't have a computer here to edit or I'll be gone from civilization for a while. That's one of the reasons why I'm trying to get all these Mortal Kombat 9 videos out right now because once they're all out, I'm out, basically. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure I have them all prepared and have stuff for you guys to watch while I'm gone. So I'll be on vacation, and if you guys need anything, I'll be back maybe August or September. After that, my original plan was to make a shorter sucks video. I was literally planning to do a Shaolin Monk sucks because I think that would be super fun. But Mortal Kombat 1 is coming out a lot sooner than I expected. So because of that, uh, I think I can't do much and I just got to prepare for Mortal Kombat 1's release when I come back from Europe. Although I think between August and Mortal Kombat 1's release, I might be able to pump out one smaller video. And I was thinking either one last Mortal Kombat 9 video because like I said, there's a lot of other things that I didn't put into my original video. And more importantly, I got a lot of comments of people bringing up interesting points that I kind of wanted to mention. So I think that would be a pretty fun video just to make one more Mortal Kombat 9 video. Or Rebirth. Yeah, do y'all remember that weird ass thing? Um, I believe it's just a seven minute video. So I could make a very short video talking about it. Although I do remember there's a lot of interesting behind the scenes stories about that. But either way, I think it might be able to be a vote. Like I'll be like, what do you guys want to see? Do you want to see me talk about Rebirth? Or do you want to hear me talk about more Shang Tsung and Raid and stuff? Because I got a lot of comments about that I think were really funny. We'll see about that when I come back from my vacation. And then after that, it's all MK1, baby. That game, when that game comes out, I'm going to be pumping out content for that or maybe like a whole entire year. Cause that's basically what I did with MK11. My plan is to get one video out per month about MK1 or maybe one per two months. Yeah, that's my plan. I feel like there's gonna be a lot I can talk about for that. And of course, cage match. I'm excited to be talking about that too. And that's about all I got to say. Thank you all so much for listening to this end credit scene. And also, thank you all for giving me an amazing year. I've noticed a lot of people have been watching my content recently, and I'm very happy about that. I'm so grateful that you guys are enjoying the content that I've been pumping out recently. Um, oh, if you guys want more content from me, I'm on the Combat Kings podcast bi-weekly. So if you guys want to see how I'm doing or make sure that I'm okay, I'll be on that podcast. Though I say that, but I'm, I'm going to be in Europe for the next month, so I won't be on the Combat Kings podcast. But, but, but that, 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 that's beside the point. Thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you guys next week bye bye uh, how about you take my acid ah! <coughs> dedication <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>